Following the conclusion of the Heisei Godzilla series in 1995, and with Mothra vs. Godzilla having proven to be its most popular entry, Toho decided to reboot the character with her own standalone film, her first since the 1961 original. This time, however, she was updated with new powers and given a new backstory, more in line with the Heisei era's aesthetic. The result was Rebirth of Mothra, the first in what would be a trilogy of films that transforms Mothra into a full-blown superhero for better and for worse. When the seal containing the ancient three-headed dragon Descadora is removed by a logging company in the forest of Hokkaido, it becomes a race between the Elias twins Mal and Laura, who want to keep him contained, and their sister Belvira, who seeks to free the monster and use it to destroy humanity. The seal quickly falls into the hands of the family of one of the loggers, who work with the Elias to keep it away from Belvira, but fail, leading to the release of Descadora. In response, the Elias summon Mothra, who, along with her newborn child, must fight together together against their ancient rival in a battle that will determine the fate of the natural world. Depending on your taste, Rebirth of Mothra is either a colorful, action-filled new take on a classic character, or a reboot that forgets what made the original one of the more unique monster movies ever made. Much of the monster and her core mythology has been changed, some for the better and some for the worse, and all of it for the benefit of its target audience, namely children. The result is an extremely flawed film that may be too stomach-churningly whimsical for certain older audiences, but thanks to some decent action scenes and a Mothra-focused narrative, that adds new dimensions to the character, those with the fortitude for it may well find themselves quite entertained. Indeed, the best thing Rebirth of Mothra has going for it is its title character. The film makes you wait a while for her appearance, but once she makes her grand entrance, the focus shifts sharply in her direction, and the film benefits all the more for it. There are a lot of new ideas thrown into the mix, including an all-new form of Mothra that sports a really intriguing design and displays some killer abilities. Her twin fairies, here named Maul and Laura, are also changed, now displaying separate personalities that allows for deeper characterization. Adding to the nuance is a third fairy, Belvira, who acts as the true antagonist of the film, though she ends up being more annoying than anything. All this should be a treat for Mothra fans though, especially those who have longed to see the characters step out from Godzilla's shadow. Unfortunately, the film around her doesn't quite live up to its potential. The simple narrative is hampered by a small cast of human characters, half of them children, and all of them given the barest of characterization. The overworked father, the frustrated mother, the kids who won't stop fighting, it's all tropes you've seen before, and the actors do what they can. But without even the slightest bit of depth, they end up being vessels to fill time and nothing more. The only standout performances are those of the twin fairies, here called the Elias, played by Megumi Kobayashi and Sayaka Yama. Gucci. They are given more dramatic scenery to chew than any prior versions of the characters, including a few catchy new songs, of course. The production is a decidedly mixed bag, ranging from good to flat-out bad. Certain effects, such as the design and execution of Descadora and the miniature sets of the Hokkaido Forest, are fantastic. Others, however, are very mediocre, particularly a chase scene between the Elias and Belvira that just doesn't impress in the slightest and goes on for way too long. The battle scenes between Mothra and Descadora, however, are up to the standards of what Toho was putting out at the time, colorful and explosive in ways that should keep kids' eyes glued to the screen. The score by Toshiyuki Watanabe is also quite good, single-handedly elevating the material with a few stirring tracks that are likely to wake those who may find themselves drifting off in boredom. Rebirth of Mothra is a movie that feels like it should be better than it is. While by no means terrible, its lack of interesting characters and severe pacing issues in the first half make for a very dull viewing experience that finally gets better once Mothra enters the picture, and by then it may be too little too late for some. Still, there is some compelling new material here for fans to get into. Descadora is a great antagonistic force, even if he doesn't end up doing much, and the battle scenes between him and Mothra are pretty exciting at certain moments. More than anything though, it's just refreshing to see Mothra step away from the Godzilla series and do her own thing, and to that end the film succeeds, providing a solid framework with which to develop future installments. Kaiju fans and Mothra enthusiasts should definitely check it out, while everyone else may find it more trouble than it's worth.
For more reviews and opinions on all things Mothra, subscribe and stay tuned to Up From The Depths. Thank you.